What has four legs and ticks? If you said an axe, you'd be wrong. I found this one laying under my folks' house and thought to myself, I hate that tree out the front of my place. Hopefully you can see where this is leading. For a change, I have no idea about the history of this axe, but we'll see what happens with that later. Now, looking back, I realize how dumb it was to use a block hammer on this. It's left a few notches in the steel, and while I can file them out later, I was wanting to leave the shape as original as possible, even on this cheap axe. I'm really not a fan of resin-filled eyes. What they do is pour a liquid resin into the eye of the axe head to fill any voids. For the electrolysis process I will need a few things, a piece of bare steel, some copper wire, a non-conductive container and some sodium carbonate, not to be confused with baking soda or bicarb powder. We will also need a way to push current through our parts, in my case I chose a 12 volt 4 amp car battery charger. The steel will become my anode, or positive terminal. It must be submerged, so the copper wire will allow me to keep the alligator clip from my charger out of the way. On second thought, I better mix up my electrolyte. Getting the exact right amount of water is super critical to this working. Not really. As long as I know roughly how much water I have, I'll be fine. To this, I'll add one tablespoon of sodium carbonate per litre of water, or just under four tablespoons for each gallon of water. The sodium carbonate is to make the water more alkaline and also help with conductivity. In saying that, I do not want the axe head, which will now be my cathode, to directly touch the steel anode. and an error. Most likely a fault protection circuit in the charger. So I give it the old switcheroo and now we can continue. I'm dialing in about four amps at four volts. Slow and steady wins the race. I've also read that higher currents can cause more black coating on the surface, making it harder to clean up later. What you are seeing here is pure hydrogen bubbles coming from the axe head's surface. There is also pure oxygen coming from the piece of scrap steel in the same container. Without going into great depths, steel rusting is an electromechanical process. Because of this, we can force it to go in reverse by running current in the opposite direction. You'll notice a change in my setup as the voltage wasn't very stable. I added an extra anode and suspended the axe a little better for better conductance. There is a black coating on the surface that needs to be scrubbed off and the entire process must be done quickly. If it is allowed to dry, rust can form on the surface straight away.
You can now see why I chose this method over just sanding and scraping down the surface because it leaves so much of the original character. The metal wasn't that pitted and it's cleaned up well and I can even still see the original branding that's on the steel. A little bit more metho to rapidly dry the surface. It will displace the water and then dries quickly. Everything is then oiled really promptly. This is the point here where I kind of read the label a bit better now. I can see that this is actually made in Sweden, so it probably is a decent axe head. A little history to go with your filing. The brand seems to be called Hultsbruck and is an old Swedish foundry founded around 1697. They still hand forge axes to this day on the original site. Though I thought using resin to set tool heads was fairly new, the stamp mark indicates that this head was made on or before 1988, meaning the handle might be a replacement. The marking stamps are not very deep, so I got lucky using electrolysis that I was able to preserve what was left as they are notorious for disappearing when restored. This head appears to be called a Yankee style and weighs about 4.5 pounds or 2 kilograms. I've decided to remake the handle as I just couldn't find one in the store that was good enough quality. I was wanting some spotted gum, but ended up with this nice straight grained eucalyptus that they have referred to as Australian oak. Not sure it'll be tough enough for this application, but I'll soon find out. The grain orientation is a little off, so I'm cutting it into strips and laminating it back together. This shouldn't affect the overall strength, if anything it could make it stronger. As much as I like using this saw, it's the wrong type for rip cuts, so I found my old jigsaw to finish up. Make sure not to over clamp the timber as you can squeeze too much glue out making a dry joint. I decided to keep the curved handle with a fawn's foot end. I like the way they feel and they look nice as well. doing a lot of the work with a spoke shave. When sharpened properly, they can make life so much easier and will reduce the amount of sanding needed later on. On the downside, I feel like I should have left the material a bit thicker in spaces, but we'll see how we go. trick when fitting a head like this, make sure the inside of the eye is oily enough to leave marks on the wood. These are the spots that can be playing down for a better fit. I 
wouldn't say it's quite perfect, but it feels comfortable and it should work well. I specially went out and bought this sharpening puck, which is made for specifically sharpening axes. It's not entirely horrible, but I'm not the biggest fan. I went back to my tried and true method of just using sandpaper. After that final cleanup, I got out some perma blue that I had bought for another job to try and match the colour with the rest of the head. So sanding this turned out to be a mistake as I took off some of the blue. When I put more on, I found out that it is also quite good at bluing timber, not just steel. So this is just a bit of linseed oil that I used on the handle and I just used regular machine oil for coating the head. I'm happy with how this turned out overall, though it wasn't without some problems, like the consistency of the colour, the time taken to get a razor finish, and that stupid shaky workbench. I think it is fairly close to how it would have been by this age had it been looked after a bit better. And while I may not have many trees to cut down with it, I think maybe a nice display rack next to the front door to deter any would-be thieves might be a nice idea as well. Make sure you let me know what you liked and disliked about this video in the comments. Subscribe if you like my videos and want to see more, and I'll catch you next time.